Hello guys, how are you doing? Just give me a few minutes to get this thing started and then we will begin today's class. So all of you who are online, if you can see me loud and clear, if you can see my PPT, just give me a thumbs up so I know you guys are with me. Great, Imadi, I'll just wait for a few seconds while people join in and then I will begin today's class. Great, Arun. All of you who are online, please give a thumbs up so that I know you are here with me. Today we are going to be discussing an extremely important topic that is transplant surgery. We will cover the basics of organ transplant. It is a topic which we don't study much in MBBS but it is extremely important for all the entrance exams. It's a little complicated, there's a lot of pathology involved. So I will try to simplify it as much as possible. So there are not going to be too many slides today but each slide is important. Great. Alright. So I am Dr. Amrit Nasta. I am a bariatric surgeon from Mumbai for those who are joining me for the first time. Today we are going to be discussing transplant surgery on the Unacademy platform. This is my referral code that is DRAMRIT-YT. So if you wish to see me like other educators on the PLUS platform, you can use that code. You will get a discount for the subscription. Meanwhile, please keep chatting in the chat box because I have my phone right here with me so I can read your questions. So as and when doubts start coming, please ask your questions. These are my upcoming courses on the PLUS platform. The ongoing course is on hepatobiliary and bariatric surgery. This has just begun. And the next course is going to be on super speciality and recent advances. So I will try to cover each of the important MCQs and all of these topics comprehensively. For all of you who are FMG students who are going to appear for the FMG exam which we don't know when it is going to happen but probably it will be in maybe June or July. An academy has started a batch course. It's a three month course. These are the subscription rates. You can join me along with the other educators covering all of the subjects for the FMG exam. Alright. So I see a lot of you are online. I'll just give you an idea of how this class is going to go. First, I will be asking an MCQ. Each of you should give your answer, whatever you deem appropriate. Don't be scared, be confident. And then I will discuss with you the relevant theory behind those questions. Everything is going to be related to the basics of organ transplant, something you must have probably done in your second MBBS in pathology. But this will have a surgical aspect and this is an extremely important high yield topic for MCQs for all entrance exams. So please be interactive guys. Alright, so this is the first one. And meanwhile you can ask your doubts as and when they appear. I am here to answer them. So, if an organ is transplanted between blood related donors, if an organ is transplanted between blood related donors, what is it called? Autograft, isograft, allograft or xenograft. Blood related donors. That's the key word here. Alright, Raghu, Bharti, are, most of you are saying allograft, Karan Singh, Meksha. Are you sure this is allograft blood related donors? They can be brothers, they can be sisters. That is allograft. Are you guys sure? 
these are the kind of questions these are the words they will put to confuse you bharti has said b isograph all right a lot of you have answered it correctly i am happy it is called an allograph no ragu varma no bharti it is allograft just because i put blood related does not allow you to make a mistake in questions like these so before we go ahead with transplant let us understand what are the basics of transplant first of all there were two words in the previous mcq one was iso one was auto auto means same person autograph means same person this is usually possible if i am doing a skin graft so when i am doing a skin graft it is on the same person that is autograft isograft yes absolutely correct not just twins they should be monozygotic they should be monozygotic or identical twins they should be monozygotic or identical twins to be called an isograft allograft is the commonly used transplant between one individual to another of the same species so the previous question was human to human so the answer was allograft and xenograft which is rarely done is a graft between different species all right it's a graft between different species now another important definition in terms of organ insertion or organ implantation is orthotopic and heterotopic graft now when i say orthotopic it means the recipient receives the graft in the same location as the native organ the recipient receives the graft in the same location or in the normal anatomical site for example when i am receiving a liver let's say i had liver failure i am getting a liver transplant now when the liver is transplanted it is put in the normal anatomical site that normal anatomical site is obviously the right hypochondriac region this is orthotopic orthotopic means same site contrarily heterotopic is when it is placed at a different site when it is placed at a different site a lot of you are online anybody can give me an example of a heterotopic graft anyone can give me an example of a heterotopic graft anyone lot of you are online what is a heterotopic graft yes karan meksha bharti ragu jitisha pancreas why where is the pancreas inserted or transplanted if you are putting a question then you don't me don't know okay kidney kidney yes bharti you are right all of you said kidney absolutely correct kidneys are transplanted in the iliac fossa but remember iliac fossa retroperitoneal it's not intraperitoneal just because it is iliac fossa it is retroperitoneal if i have a choice when i am taking a kidney from the donor should i take his right kidney left kidney or either one is equally effective between the two kidneys which kidney is better as a donor so if i am taking like let's say i am taking my brother's kidney which kidney should i prefer to harvest left right or either one works these are the kind of conceptual things that you need to carry with yourself guys in transplant bharti saying left whatever answer you give has to come with some explanation otherwise it is meaningless is it left is it right why a lot of you are saying left why left is preferred if you are guessing you will forget it the next time the question is twisted why left ragu jitisha karan kia imadini akanksha all of you are saying left why obviously there has to be a reason excellent excellent because the left renal vein is longer and because it is longer it is easier to anastomose 
This is the only reason. The left renal vein is longer, so it is an easier anastomosis, right? Also, something that Jitisha said about pancreas, yes, pancreas are also heterotopic. Where are the pancreas implanted? What is the location of the pancreas? Where are the pancreas implanted, guys? Quickly, then we'll move on to the next question. A lot of things have to be discussed. What is the location of pancreas in the recipient? Anyone? Nobody seems to have studied pancreas. Answer is pelvis. It is pelvis and it is intraperitoneal. Unless I am anastomosing it with the bladder. So pancreas are implanted in the pelvis. Alright. Let's come to the second question. Which of these is the most common cause of graft rejection? Now I am talking about the preparation of the patient before I select the donor for the recipient. So what should I look for to prevent graft rejection? Which of these antigens is the most common cause of graft rejection? Is it the A antigen, B antigen, both A and B equal or the HLA? Remember A and B are the ABO, blood group antigens. Okay, three of you have said HLA, not both A and B. Okay, Bharati is saying both A and B. Excellent. Not A or B. Most of these questions that I am asking are created by myself. They are from the minute statements which I believe your concepts are lacking in. Which is why most of the times I get mixed answers. So some of you are saying both A and B. Some of you are saying HLA. Obviously the answer is HLA. HLA or human leukocyte antigen human leukocyte antigen yes blood group antigens are responsible but they are definitely not the most common cause because they are easily tested they are easily tested getting an identical HLA match is not so easy now let me tell you what is graft rejection pathologically so there are two major groups or antigens which are responsible for graft rejection. One is the ABO. Now ABO is expressed by all cells. Remember the A and B antigens are expressed by all cells not just RBCs. RBCs are only what we used when we are doing the test or the blood grouping. And ABO mismatch is responsible for a type of rejection called a hyperacute rejection. We will discuss all the rejections towards the end, not right now. Right now we will go in a system. First let us look at the pre-preparation. So ABO mismatch is a cause for hyper-acute rejection. And remember it's not essential to match the RH subtype. So your RH positive or negative don't have to be matched. The more important, the more pathologically responsible is the HLA. Now what is HLA? HLA are antigens which are present on the surface of the cells. They are present on the surface of the cells. Now HLA has different types. There is a class 1, there is a class 2. There is also a class 3 which is not really counted or not really matched. Now they are present on the short arm of chromosome 6. So they are present on the short arm of chromosome 6. Now what are these antigens and what do we need to know about them? First of all, they are present again on almost all the cells and they are different in each individual. Each individual has a different HLA subset. Once you understand HLA, most of the other things in transplant rejection will be understood. Each individual has a different HLA expression. Only identical twins have the same HLA type. Only if the twins are identical will they have the same HLA type. Now what are these classes and which are the ones which are important? So there are two classes of HLA. There is a class 1 and class 2. 
and they have some names or subtypes. I right? class one has A, B, and C. Class two has D Q, D R, and D P. It should be P Q R, but just as a nomenclature, it's D Q, D R, D P. You can remember it as P Q and R also. So basically, each of these subtypes has further classes, which are A, B, C, D, Q, D, R, D, P. There is also an H, L, A, three. Now, ideally, ideally, because I know individuals have different H, L, A types, I should try to match donor and recipient on maximum H, L, A types. All right. So I should try to get as much of a common match. as possible between the donor and the recipient this will reduce the risk of hla induced rejection so remember i have class 1 and class 2 now from all of these six types the ones which are commonly matched all right the ones which are commonly matched are a b and d r a and b from class 1 dr from class 2 so two individuals where there is one donor and one recipient they should ideally have a hla match or also called as a haplotyping also called as a haplotyping in these three out of these six groups now one thing we need to understand is each of these is coded by each an individual gene so a has one gene b has one gene dr has one gene and in pathology what we know is each gene has two forms anybody can tell me what are these forms called where each gene manifests in two forms anybody what are the two forms present of each gene it starts with an a come on guys this much pathology has to be known otherwise you are going to land in a soup each gene has two forms excellent they are called as alleles which means when i am testing for hla a b and dr i am testing for two alleles of each gene which means i am testing for six alleles Yes, all of you are right. I am testing for six alleles. Ideally, out of six alleles, I should have four alleles which are matching. So the minimum requirement for an HLA match is four out of six. Now, if I have to choose one HLA type between A, B, and D, R, I am saying all three are important. But if I have to choose one. which is the most important between these three genes is it a b or d r the reason i'm spending so much time on this is because hla itself has a bundle of mcqs so between a b and d r which is the most important subtype which has to be matched yes guys is it a b or d r yes anybody Yes, remember the doctor is the most important. In today's day and age, in today's time, we doctors are the most important frontline warriors. So never forget in the whole of HLA system, DR or doctor, the DR subtype is the most significant subtype. All right. So as I was saying, HLA is the most common cause of graft rejection. Now coming to deciding who is the donor who is the appropriate donor from all of these donors which of these donor grafts will have maximum recipient survival which of these will have maximum recipient survival is it deceased brain dead deceased circulatory dead living haplo identical or living identical sibling donor this is directly picked up from bailey and love this statement is picked up directly from bailey and love 
and this question has not yet been asked it looks a little complicated but on the face of it actually it's quite simple which of these will have maximum graft survival from the donor okay lot of you are saying akanksha ragu saurabh miksha are all saying living identical sibling donor yes excellent guys don't be fooled by this brain dead donor a dead donor is obviously going to have more ischemia of the organs than a living donor so clearly dead donors cannot be the answer so clearly your choice is between haplo identical and identical sibling now haplo identical means at least 4 out of 6 hla match and identical sibling will have complete hla match as i told you hla is different for everybody unless they are identical twins so the answer the best donor will always be living versus deceased and identical twin versus any other haplo identical donor so remember living donors are ideal but they are not always feasible obviously there is a limit to what organs can be harvested from a living donor the preferred organs which are usually harvested are the kidneys or sometimes a part of the liver or a part of the lung these are the harvestable organs from living donors no parents are not identical ideally it should be identical twin make sure who has the least risk of rejection so living donors was the first the second type is the deceased circulatory dead donors dead donors they have the least graft survival so if i ask you which is the worst if they ask you which is the worst kind of donor or the least graft survival it is circulatory dead donor all right and the reason for that is they have the maximum warm ischemia time they have the maximum warm ischemia time all right we will discuss ischemia times later now another important yeah c is parents correct so it need not be it can be unrelated also but the haplotype can be similar the commonly used from which a lot of organs can be harvested are brain dead donors better called as brain stem dead so what we need to know is the criteria for diagnosis of brain stem dead so you the mcq will come on all of these are indicators of brain stem dead except so obviously cranial nerve reflexes should be absent motor responses should be absent to painful stimulus however spinal reflexes may be present because spinal reflexes may be present even in a brain dead person all right so spinal reflexes are an exception even if they are present the person can be labeled as brain stem dead i will discuss this ischemia time i have a question on that and third is there should be no spontaneous respiration so cranial nerve motor response and spontaneous respiration this is called as apnea test this is called as apnea test so what is done is first the person is pre oxygenated for 5 minutes then the ventilator is disconnected and after 10 minutes you document that the partial pressure of co2 is more than 60 all right the partial pressure of co2 is more than 60 this means apnea test positive this goes as one of the criteria of brain stem death so remember cranial nerve motor response and spontaneous respiration all of these have to be fulfilled spinal reflexes reflexes are the exception to diagnose someone as brain stem dead all right this is a famous question which of these is not an absolute contraindication to organ donation it's one of the favorite questions has been asked in different ways 
I could have twisted this but I have kept it simple so I hope all of you get this right. Which of these is not an absolute contraindication to organ donation? Is it Hepatitis B, HIV, Skin Cancer or Prion Disease? Again these are directly picked up from Bailey and Love guys. Okay, Pankaj, Prabod, Raghu are saying HIV. Bhargav Ram is saying Prion. Bharti is saying squamous cell carcinoma. Sej is saying Prion. Okay, anyone for A? No one is going for A. Aishwarya, Sahaj are saying Prion. Akanksha is saying squamous cell. Nobody for A. I tell this in each class of mine, if the audience is giving a divided answer, which means some of you said HIV, some of you said squamous cell CA, some of you said prion, this question has what is called as a high discriminating index. It has a high discriminating index. These are the kind of questions which are repeated again and again in AIMS type of exams, where they feel each of the options is being selected by an equal number of students. So this is one of those questions. Okay, I'll give you the answer. The answer is squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Now understand what are the absolute contraindications. Prion disease is an absolute con. It was the first thing that is given in Bailey and Love. The first thing, Crude's fall Yakutsen disease. Hepatitis B specifically active hepatitis B. Active systemic sepsis. HIV unless the recipient is also HIV positive. Otherwise it is a contraindication. The tricky one is this. This is the one you need to remember. If the person had a malignancy in the previous 5 years and this excludes the important other exclusions. They will always ask you on the exclusion. They will always ask you on the exclusion. The exclusions are primary CNS tumors, skin cancers apart from melanoma. So our answer of squamous cell carcinoma, even if it was basal cell cancer, they are exclusions. And in situ cancer of uterus. These are the three identified absolute contraindications to organ donation. Alright, so remember these lists, it's a very simple list, but there are some keywords not given in Bailey like active hep B. So this is a relaxation. If the person has old hep B, he may still be considered as a donor or a recipient. Alright, remember these important points in organ donation. Alright, so now I have gotten the donor. Now I have to put the organ in the recipient. So my question is, which of these has the longest cold ischemia time? Is it kidney, pancreas, liver or small bowel? Again, it's an extremely important topic. We will discuss this. Which of these organ has the longest cold ischemia time? Is it kidney, pancreas, liver, small bowel? Mind you, my entire class of today is from Bailey and Love. Okay, Bharti saying kidney, Raghu, Kripa, Sahaj, kidney, don't just guess, don't fire in the dark. Is it kidney, pancreas, liver, small bowel? Only 4 of you have answered, even though 30 of you are online, which means others are still contemplating. These are not the kind of questions you can leave an option. Alright. These are the questions which you must know. These are the rank defining questions if you don't get them correct. If you get it right, it's fine. If you don't get it right, you are drowning. Okay, so most of you have given the correct answer. The answer is kidney. Now what is cold ischemia time and what is warm ischemia time? Now remember, when we declare someone as dead, whether he is brain dead or circulatory dead, especially circulatory dead, what happens is the blood supply to the organ goes. So what is to be done is to keep the organs salvageable, they have to be harvested and put into a cold solution. 
so a cold solution is in injected into the organ so that its metabolism slows to slow down its metabolism so this time which is taken between the cessation of circulation till injection of a cold solution is called as warm ischemia time it means the time for which the organ remained unperfused all right warm ischemia time simply put is the time for which the organ remained unperfused obviously this implies if the person is a dcd circulatory dead person the moment he dies the warm ischemia time begins so people who are dcd the organs usually have a prolonged warm ischemia time which is why the organ harvesting is poor versus someone who is brain dead brain dead but circulation continues the warm ischemia time is yet to begin as long as i can keep his blood pressure maintained and the organs perfuse the warm ischemia time is kept minimal so basically when i am targeting the organ of a donor my intent is to keep the warm ischemia time the lowest that is the intent which means person is expired i should in immediately do a laparotomy whichever organ i am harvesting isolate it inject the cold solution and bring it to the cold ischemia phase because obviously cold ischemia time is going to be much longer the organ can be salvaged for longest time okay i'll give you the important ones and they are cold storage times this is again from a table in bailey and love where kidney has the longest kidney liver pancreas the important one least is heart lung and small bowel they have the least cold storage or cold ischemia time all right so remember this kidneys have the longest small bowel heart and lungs have the least cold storage time and obviously as i told you when i have done the laparotomy from the donor i flush the organ with some solutions one of which is uw uw stands for university of wisconsin baron is saying skin has indefinite warm ischemia time okay or uro collins solution both of these solutions have a lot of chemicals in them to slow down the metabolism the important chemical that we must know that is present in uw is allopurinol allopurinol which is used in gout remember allopurinol is one of the chemicals present in uw solution all right and when i have harvested the organ the first thing that i do is i wrap it in a sterile bag so i don't put it in anything i wrap it in a bag and then i keep it in an ice box so remember the organ is transplanted or the, transported in an ice box but it is kept in a sterile plastic bag not kept directly on ice kept on a sterile plastic bag all right now let's look at this one let's see how many of you get this right this is a little tricky one 2 weeks after undergoing renal transplant patient complains of flank pain and reduced urine output which of these investigations are performed except all of these are commonly performed except is it cyclosporin renal doppler nucleotide scan or renal biopsy all of these are commonly performed except cyclosporin renal doppler radionucleotide scan or renal biopsy all right bhargav ram is saying renal biopsy please understand what has happened over here then think of the answer most of you are saying biopsy akanksha is saying nucleotide scan okay don't follow the others please think on your own what has happened here remember what has happened here after transplant if the organ has failed 
So renal transplant and reduced output, which means the organ has failed. This is called as primary graft failure. This is called as primary graft failure. There are many, many reasons of graft failures. But what has happened is I have implanted the graft. The organ, the function of the organ has stopped, which means the person has landed up with primary graft failure. In this case, the graft which has failed is the kidney. So my intent of the investigations is to identify why has the kidney failed? What is the cause of primary graft failure? There are many causes. Let's look at each of the causes. Then I'll give you the answer. So graft failure can be early or late. In early, the common ones are non-function, which means the graft had a long ischemic time. So by the time I implanted it, it had already undergone necrosis or vascular thrombosis. So the renal artery got blocked or rejection, which we are going to discuss some infection or calcineurin inhibitor toxicity. This case here is two weeks. So this is early graft rejection, which means obviously I will do cyclosporin levels because calcineurin inhibitor toxicity is one of the common causes of graft failure. I will do a Doppler to look for vascular block, right? As Imadi is saying, to look for vascular block. I will do a biopsy to look for rejection. So the answer is radionucleotide scan. Yes, it can be done, but it is not commonly done. It is done when most of the common investigations are negative only in that case will I attempt a nucleotide scan now understand rejection whether it's hyperacute acute or chronic is just one of the causes of graph failure graph failure is the problem of the graph not working there are many causes as you can see we are going to focus now only on rejection basically rejection means for whatever immunological problem, the graph did not work. So now we are talking only about rejection as a cause of graph failure, apart from the other causes. So there are three types. The first is hyperacute, which happens within hours. The time limit is less than 48 hours. So what happens is, let's say, I transplanted the kidney in someone who had an ABO mismatch. So the person was B positive, the donor was A positive, the recipient was B positive. So when the A positive donor kidney came into the recipient, the B antibodies ate up the kidney. And this happens immediately. So this is hyperacute rejection due to preformed antibodies. Can anybody tell me what is the type of hypersensitivity? Is it type 1, type 2, type 3 or type 4? Preformed antibodies is which hypersensitivity reaction as a cause of hyperacute rejection. Extremely important guys. This is the pathology you need to know. So hyperacute rejection is what hypersensitivity re reaction? Type 1, type 2, type 3 or type 4. Excellent, it is type 2. Due to preformed antibodies. Type 1 is anaphylaxis. Then comes acute. Acute happens after 48 hours. But usually within 6 months. Chronic happens after 6 months. Now, both of these are T-cell mediated. Both of these are T cell mediated. So all of the T cells or macrophages are responsible. It's only the duration when it appears. So which type of hypersensitivity reaction is this? Which type of hypersensitivity reaction is this? Again, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Yes, guys, 
again pathology pathology it's not going to leave you so this is a cell mediated so it is type 4 all right so hyper acute is type 2 acute and chronic both are type 4 hypersensitivity reactions another thing you need to know is liver is resistant to hyper acute rejection liver is resistant to hyper acute rejection all right now let's come to this of all these causes of graft failure which is the most common cause this is a decider question of the day all of these are causes of graft failure which of these is the most common cause of graft failure is it ischemia thrombosis hyperacute acute cmv ureteric chronic rejection, arterial stenosis late, recurrence of original disease or a mechanical block. Which of these is the most common cause of graft failure? Come on guys, this is the deciding question. Okay, assume that all of these are your options. See, someone is saying CMV infection, someone is saying chronic rejection, hyperacute rejection, ischemia, excellent, recurrence. This perhaps is the best question. I am getting all answers. Someone is saying ischemia also. All of the options are taken. This will come in your exam. Trust me, this question will come in your exam. Just seeing the way you guys are all over the place. If you knew me a little bit, for those who know me, I have given you the answer in the slide. There is just one which is of a different color in the whole slide. That is chronic rejection. I have put it in a different color for a reason. This is the most common cause of graft failure. So of all the rejections, chronic rejection is the most common rejection. And of all causes of graft failure, chronic rejection is the most common cause of graft failure. And mind you, it is the most difficult to treat. It is the most difficult to treat. All right. So friends, that was today's class. If you wish to join me on the plus platform, you can use my code. These are the different durations for the subscriptions, which will help you prepare. That's me. All right. All my courses are live. We have weekly quizzes, doubt clearing sessions. There are a lot of other educators which you will have access to, not just me, for all subjects on this platform for your PG prep. So friends, at the end of the class, please give a thumbs up in the review section. Hope this class was useful. Do join me for my upcoming classes. Take care guys and stay safe.